much welcome to the 33rd ACM ICPC finals. This one held here in Stockholm at KTH, the Royal Institute of Technology. And for the first time ever live broadcasted, we will be taking you through this competition for the next six hours. We have a pretty good view where we are sitting because we have the studio here for this broadcast just next to the library, mm. which a few weeks ago was filled with books. They have now been carried out for the teams to sit behind us to compete. Right now they're waiting outside the door to enter the library. If you succeed at the World Finals, you're really one of the best of the best of the best. And I mean, it is important, so I think they're nervous. I mean, you've been a coach. Mm -hmm. You have to sit by up there and not be close to your team. Is yeah. that frustrating? It's very frustrating. <laughs> it's extremely frustrating. There is nothing you can do. You know, you're actually kind of kind of useless at that but point. But you can't do like in baseball where you have the different signs with the fingers no. and numbers and so? No, I, I, I wish I could, but you're not allowed to. Well, you're not. No, no. And that is Bill Poucher, the executive director of the ICPC. We have a photo session. He's showing... Uh, that, that is the trophy that uh, you will win mm -hmm. if you And the ceremony win. for the winner is at the concert hall here in Stockholm it later is. on tonight. Yes. just been watching the 100, 100 teams entering the library at KTH here in Stockholm. They are now anxiously waiting to start the competition. They were here yesterday to rehearse. They all knew exactly where to go. Uh, you have in each team three contestants, one computer. I've been a contestant a few times, but this is the first time I actually got to help hold this one. So, you know, if... Uh, if you don't win, you can always try to organize it. <laughs> First off, I would like to just once again give a great thanks to our judges, who I think are standing behind me. A big applause for them, please. They've done all the problems for you. Seven, Seven six, five, five, four, three, two, one. So the competition has officially started and for the next five hours this 100 teams will be frustrated, they will be uh, happy solving the problems and I do understand that within about 30-40 minutes we will have a picture of which of the problems are easier than the others to solve and there are upstairs behind me in the different rooms judges sitting really carefully judging what's happening on the floor and also analysts analyzing the competition itself. And they will, of course, be part of the broadcast from the studio to talk to us throughout the competition. Now, tell me again, Frederick. I mean, you have double roles here. You're the co-host of the broadcast, but you also, you are in charge if anything happens during the competition. Yes, I am the world finals director. Uh, so if some te team would do something bad, uh, they would come and get me, and I would be the one in the end deciding if they're disqualified or not. Yesterday I didn't understand why they had all the balloons. I thought they were for decoration. I thought it looked Not very only for pretty. decoration. I thought it was really pretty. And then the rehearsal started and all of a sudden the balloons were at all the different desks instead. Yes. Um, the, the idea is that as soon as you solve a problem, you will get a balloon. And each problem has uh, a distinct color. So then, throughout the competition, we will be able to see who has been solving the problems in the correct way mm -hmm. by watching the balloons on the tables. Yes, and I uh, hope we will also be able to get some kind of scoreboard up. Okay. So we can see who's in the lead. And, uh, okay. Do you also think someone from Russia will win? Um, that is not unlikely. That's a very diplomatic answer. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know what, while we're watching That's the contestants starting to play now, Purdue we have University. a report about, you know, their expectations. So let's watch that report. I think that a lot
lot of people come here expecting that everybody else is going to be better than them and that it's not going to go that well. And I think that tomorrow is going to be surprising. And I expect to be surprised and I think that a lot of teams will and they're going to find out then that they're better than they thought they were and every team with a good attitude is going to have a good time. We want to win the first place in Latin America. We know we don't have the high level for to win the, the World Finals. We persuaded in last year too. Hope we will use that experience and we will do better in this contest too. Uh, well, we're hoping to get uh, top 50, maybe top 25. As long as we don't buckle under any pressure or anything, I, I think we should be able to get three or four and maybe more. Doing pretty well, yeah. I think we're just here to have fun. I mean, I'd say we're excited. I think we have a good chance of doing this. We're very excited right now. Um, we're hoping to do good tomorrow. There are a lot of big guns there, so we don't have very high expectations. But yeah, we're looking forward to it. We are confident that we can do well tomorrow, mm, maybe. Well, we're not hoping for much, but we're hoping to win our own region, South Pacific. It's only three teams. I reckon we've got a really good chance. To solve many problems, uh, have fun and uh, I don't know what more to, ex to expect. <laughs> oh, we hope we can get a, a prize, or not, no matter what prize it is, or bronze medal or silver medal, that's okay. I think we got our first solution now. You do? Yes, it's a University of Waterloo solved the problem A after 10 minutes, which put them in the lead, as you can see here on the scoreboard. So University of Waterloo from Canada. They are solving problems for five hours. Do they get to eat or drink or anything? There, there is. There is food going to be uh, available. I don't know if it's already. Can they uh, leave their seats? There are f food on the floor. They can leave their seats to go and get food. I would say that usually you wouldn't... Oh, They're taking that's another. That's yellow, yellow color is for problem A. And they're taking down a yellow balloon because some team has solved a problem. And it's very important in, in, in this sport to, to solve the easiest problems first. It is? Why? Yeah, because in the way that uh, the time is counted. Um, as we mentioned earlier, the winner is the one who solves the most problems. But in the event that several teams solve the same amount of problems, we will look at the time. And the time is calculated as well, you basically take the time from the beginning of the contest until you solve the problem for each problem. And that means that if you solve the easy ones first, your total time will be lower than if you solve the, the hard ones first. So it's very important for the teams to recognize which problems are the easiest and solve them first. <laughs> uh, so far, there's been two submissions on problems other than A from Chicago and Iowa. Both were uh, failed. Oh, they were fa what happens then? Well, uh, they do not get a solved problem, for one thing, and the other thing is that they get a penalty t time of 20 minutes. But as it said 2-1 uh, on, on one of the teams. Can we see the scoreboard again, please? Mm, oh, yeah. Let me explain that. Yeah, because... The, n the, the numbers, numbers in the green... The green boxes means a correct solution. Okay. And the numbers in the boxes means how many tries you had. So if you look at, for example... MIT? Uh, then, then you can see that they have two uh, tries. So they had one incorrect attempt, which means they got 20 penalty minutes. Oh, okay. And that's why their time in the rightmost column is so much higher than all the others. Basically, they were trying at the same time as Shanghai Yao Tong, because they have exactly 20 more minutes than them, because they got 20 penalty minutes. Oh, and right. now you can see that the International Institute of Information Technology, Hyderabad, got their first solution and have no penalty time. So they jumped up ahead of Tbilisi and MIT. Uh, the blue ones uh, means that they have made a submission, but the judges haven't answered yet. Okay. So we don't know, it's pending. And now the blue one uh, for Belarusian got red, and red obviously means Wrong. incorrect. And uh, it's delightful to have you in the studio now, Bill Poucher. Well, thank you. It's, uh Delightful to be here. How are you? I'm just absolutely great. You look calm. Oh, of course I'm calm. I have no alternative. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be jumping up and down. And well, you know, it's a, it's a trait. It's actually a trait of most of us. Um, when you um, have done uh, the ultimate uh, e-sport, 
um, whether it's in the ACM programming contest or in other contexts, you understand how to get into the zone. Do I exaggerate if I think you eat, sleep, and dream this? <laughs> um, no, I don't sleep. Oh, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I love this. It's, it's so exciting, you know, um, to see teams collaborate, uh, to see folks really bind their strengths together and accomplish what they do, it's amazing. Because you've really been in it from the very beginning. A when, long, long time when back you started since with, the yeah. 70s, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, competition is tough. There are 1,838 universities in the ICPC community. And to be in the top 100 is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's very, very hard to uh, advance to the world finals. I wish we had our team here, but they're absolutely great. You know, um, if you're in the top 10% of a regional competition, that's extraordinary. So what is the big thing competing in programming? Well, this is, this is what is interesting. It's actually the collaboration. It's the teamwork. See, computers don't solve problems. People do. Uh, computers amplify what we do, and we're the people who build the tools that allow people to amplify or compensate for what nature gave them or didn't give them. Now, what you see out here is that competition is wholesome in that it allows students who are competing to become the best that they can be to set their own standards. And what kind of standards do they set? There are students out here who have solved 3,000 problems in their lives in preparation for this competition. If I assigned 30 problems in a semester at a major university, <laughs> they'd line up at the provost office claiming that I was harsh. I'm not sure everybody knows where we are. Stockholm, Sweden, northern part of Europe. You know, we have people coming from all over. This is Stockholm, the capital of Sweden, often referred to as the Venice of the North. Stockholm is built on 14 different islands connected by 57 bridges, and that is what Stockholm means, the town in between bridges. With water all around and hundreds of parks in the city, you breathe nature in the middle of the city centre. Stockholm is considered to have one of the cleanest environments among the capitals in Europe. The water is so clean you can go fishing and catch salmon in the middle of the city. Stockholm is built where the Lake Mälaren opens up to the Baltic Sea and neighboring countries. Trade has always been an important factor. So Stockholm has been the cultural, political and economic center of Sweden since the 13th century. The old town, Gamla Stan, this is where Stockholm was founded more than 800 years ago in 1252. The narrow cobblestone streets in Old Town attract many tourists all year round. This is also where you find the Royal Palace, built in Italian Baroque style. It is one of the largest palaces in the world, with over 600 rooms. No, they're not only bedrooms and living rooms. Five museums are located in the Royal Palace as well. Yes, the palace is open to the public. And it is here, in Sweden's National Cathedral, located in the old town next to the palace, where the Crown Princess Victoria will get married. During the 20th century, Stockholm has transformed into a large cosmopolitan city. Old architecture mixed with modern, advanced technology in a city full of natural scenery. A constantly growing city, today one-fifth of Sweden's population lives in the Greater Stockholm area. Every year, one million tourists visit Stockholm. Visiting, you might find Stockholm affordable. According to the Merker Cost of Living survey last year, Stockholm is the cheapest capital in Europe to live in. Located in the northern part of Europe, you might think it is always cold in Stockholm. Yes, the average temperature in the wintertime drops to the freezing point. Well, summer days usually have an average temperature of around 20 degrees Celsius or around 70 Fahrenheit. Comfortable, sure. Then again, summer has not arrived yet, but spring has sprung. 
And again, Stockholm is opening its gates to the outdoors. Now you can see the uh, submissions that are currently being uh, looked at by the judges. And there are three small boxes here. The first box is uh, when the program is compiling. If that would become red, that would mean a compiler. And that's really bad. Yeah. Uh, the second box is running. And that's while the program is running. And if that one turns red, that means that the program crashed. The third one, you can, for, for example, see the top one. That's the validation. If that one turns red, then the answer was simply wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for example, Leon here had an incorrect submission. Mm -hmm. And Stanford has a submission for B. It's still yellow. That means that the judges are still looking at it. Mm -hmm. And they have been for quite a while, so I'm wondering. You know, St. Petersburg State University of Information Technology and Mechanics and Optics is a very special university. Um, they had, uh, in the early years, before 1991, they had the privilege of recruiting the 20 finest students uh, throughout the Soviet Union uh, at the 10th grade to come to their campus. And so they, they have been a magnet uh, university for a long time. Mm. And it's great to see these students doing a great job. And of course, for Sweden, for Stockholm, for KTH to roll out, roll out the red carpet. Or perhaps the blue, and, the blue and yellow carpet. Thank you very much, <laughs> very, Professor very nice Baylor Thank University. You very really. Uh -huh. One of the fathers of the entire competition. Mm -hmm. So what's going through their minds now? Well, uh, Read their minds, please. Yeah, I'll try to. The, uh, the few ones that sold one or two, they are you know, on track and pretty happy, and they're continuing working, trying to read in on the problems. China, Asia is coming strongly in this competition. It was started in the United States. Mm -hmm. Well, crossed, I mean, crossed the Atlantic to involve Europe. That is University of Waterloo, right there. But it's just, we just see one. No, no, no. You have uh, one in the middle. He's writing. He's probably working on one problem. Uh, no yeah. one is working on the computer right now. No, and that's pretty that bad. Three solved problems, and uh, they're not even using the computer. <laughs> that's impressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and look, they're all of them, all of them on the first try. It's only. Yeah. Uh, what we can see here is the uh, actual screen and uh, the webcam from some team, I'm guessing this is MIT. If you were sitting next to these people, this is what you would see, this is their actual computer. It took 10 minutes and uh, Waterloo had solved A. Yeah, that's impressive, I would say. Uh, and, and were you surprised? Well, the, some, I think around 10 minutes is standard. You some, have seen the problems, we haven't. Yeah. Which uh, are the easier ones? I think A is one of the, the easy ones. And, and you can actually see that on the scoreboard. So if once a problem has been solved by one team, it's very likely that other teams also solve it. That's a general rule. But they're <laughs> try, why are they trying on K? Yeah. Because, Do you understand that? Because if, if you want to win, you can't really wait for, for the other teams to solve it first. Here's Waterloo again. Okay. <laughs> they still are touching the computer. <laughs> Come on. Do I love on them. Do I love purpose. them. So here you see the first solution to C being delivered to University of Maryland. Oh, congratulations. Good on you. Last year's winner, St. Petersburg State University of IT Mechanics and Optics, they get the first green balloon. And you can see that here. So that's the home team. KTH, the Royal Institute of Technology. But what's happening? St. Petersburg State University have uh, just recently got their fourth problem solved. So they're now in the lead. They're the only <sighs> team with four problems solved. Good and course. we just got the fourth problem from last year's winners, <laughs> which means that we now have St. Petersburg State University in first place and St. Petersburg State University of IT Mechanics and Optics second play. Yeah. Here we can see them, uh, MIT. He is actually working on the computer. Oh, well. Yeah. And uh, the competition has been going on for a bit more than two hours now. Yeah. We're almost halfway. Almost halfway. Ha 11 problems to solve. Seven of them are solved by some team. Four of them are still unsolved. And still in the lead, St. Petersburg State University. Uh, and, but Stanford has moved up into third place. Jonathan Schaefer from Canada, you were the organizer of the last year's, competi last year's competition in Banff. Co-chair of the organization committee, yes. Uh. 
We just got Oxford uh, on their fifth solutions. Oxford now to third place. Back. Back up, yeah. Back up in the Back top. Back up in the top, where they belong. You know, it's amazing when you look at the problems. Now, you have to understand, I'm an experienced programmer. I've been a professional for 30 years. And you read these problems, and I just shake my head because, yeah, if I could do one of them in five hours, maybe two, I'd be really, really good. Last year, the winning team, uh, St. Petersburg, scored eight problems. And I'm just absolutely in awe of the talent these people have. It's incredible. There are skills at taking a problem, dissecting it, figuring it out, and then programming it with zero errors in such a tight, uh, tight time frame is incredible. I thought I was good. <laughs> these guys are better. Is that a question, generation question? A generation question. Well, I'm of the younger generation, of course. Um, no, I just think uh, the way that we teach people is much better. How we understand algorithms is much better. The tools, the software, and the programming tools we have is better. And uh, basically, we got some pretty smart people out there. They always do a superb job. Jonathan, you talked about this being held in different places and the. Uh, it really started at the city hall here in Stockholm. Why, why not just see the pictures from, from about city hall to start with? I present to you the German University in Cairo, the Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, the International Institute of Information Technology, Hyderabad. Every year, the ICPC has searched for, found, and gathered some of the brightest and most talented young people on the planet. And last but not least, we have fun and we laugh. And if 700 people smiling and laughing is not something that makes the world a better place, then honestly, I don't know what is. I saw a piece of uh, the inauguration here at the City Hall in Stockholm, and uh, we saw Frederick in a suit. You look really good. Yeah, thank you. Look you. Good. you look good now, too. <laughs> but we saw you officially in a suit. Sometimes Frederick, he, he's a bit upset that the teams are not using the computer constantly. And I'm going, why use the computer if you are Th that's solving just, the problem in your wine? Mind. It's, it's very important that you solve the problems offline first before you start working on the computer. If you make a mistake, you, you lose a lot of time. Uh, if you know exactly what you're doing when you sit down by the computer, it's going to be much faster. You've been a competitor too. Yeah, I competed in the World Finals in uh, the year 2000. Do you think they're nervous? Uh, probably, but uh, I think they, they're not thinking about the, that right now. They're just focused on solving the problems. Okay. So what, what is it that you see? What's happening? Um, I think the problems are a little bit more difficult than usual. Uh, there was one very easy problem, the A problem. And then we had a few problems that were a little bit more difficult. Um, but then there, there's still a lot of prob problems left that no one has even tried. So, mm -hmm. so I could just try to describe the first easy problem. Uh, it's um, you're basically working as a, a controller at an airport, and you have um, a set of flights coming in. So, for instance, you have a flight from Tokyo coming in, and uh, you know that that flight is coming in at uh, 2.10, um, and it has to land somewhere after 2.10, so maybe between 2.10 and 2.25. And then you have a list of other flights coming in, and you have this, this interval of time where they have to land. But, but it's basically an optimization problem for for uh, scheduling flights. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of money in that, right? Yeah. The next way. easiest problem is the problem B. Um, 
it's a little bit more difficult to describe. You, you're giving an electrical circuit uh, with and or uh, not gates, uh, and basically you're, you're, try, you're trying. You also give measurements of this circuit, so inputs and the outputs that the circuit generated, and you want to determine uh, if the circuit circuit is, is functioning like it should, or if maybe there is one gate that is uh, not functioning. So. So it's uh, it makes sense. automatic quality yeah. control. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's important. Yeah, it's uh, probably a useful thing to have if you're, looking at, if you're working with these kind of circuits. And how, what's the solution? Can you describe the solution? Uh, Do you know the solution? Oops. To which one? To A, for example. To A, for example. The easy one. Um, the easy one, you're giving this, this list of lights and intervals. So ah. the first thing is that you, you try all uh, permutations of the flights, you just try all possible ways to rearrange them, uh, the order of when they're going to land. Um, so that, that's the first step. It, it's not, you don't have a lot of flights, so you can do that. And right. um, then you're basically trying different um, minimal time intervals and seeing if, it, um, if it's possible to satisfy. Okay, do you know what F, what kind of problem that is? Uh, F is about uh, fencing um, trees. So you're giving, um, you have, you have um, <coughs> a set of small young trees that you want to fence off so that deers can't uh, eat these eat trees them, or yeah. destroy them. The goal is to just minimize the length of uh, the total fence that you use. So it's, it's an optimization problem So all these problem problems again. are rather practical? In some sense, yes. Uh, they're usually a bit simplified, so you, in, in a real-world application you probably need to add a bit more. Like you said, you get the penalty time for submitting an answer incorrectly. Can you try? How many times can you try on, on solving an issue? How many you want to? Okay, so there's no there's limit. No limit no, no. If you try it five times, that's enough. No, no? You, you get 20 minutes penalty but, time, but yeah. only if you solve it at the end. So at the, oh. uh, you can you can always continue submitting. It's always better to solve it than uh, not solving it, even okay. if you try many times. You, you don't need to be afraid to, to uh, try to solve a problem because it's always better to try than not to try. Uh, when do they get tired? I mean, this, takes, this goes on for five hours. Don't they get tired? You do get tired, and especially if you're getting stuck at some problem. They, they can go and get some food and they can go to the bathroom, yeah. but that's about it. Mm -hmm. the, uh, that's a good thing to do, just to get away from the computer for a few minutes. And usually that's when you solve the problems, when you try, when you think about something different. Well, thank you so much for joining us and I hope to see you here again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you again. Thank you. What is happening? Oh, let's look at the scoreboard. We now have uh, five teams with five solved solutions. Uh, and it was quite a while since St. Uh, since, like, Petersburg State University, for example, uh, got their fifth one. So, I would guess that we will see a team with six solve, solved uh, problems pretty soon. Now Waterloo uh, got their, still not using the computer, uh, got their fifth solution. Uh, and once again on the first try. So there, and you can see here, they were late in solving the fifth problems, right? Mm -hmm. But they're still in second place. Yes. And why? Because, because of two things. They, uh, they have no penalty because they have none incorrect submission so far. And also because they uh, got their early submissions early. Last year's winner is now up in the lead again. They were the first team on six. Ooh. And I told you so, we're now up. The leaders got six problems. I mean, it seems among everybody that the Russians are favorites, and especially the Russians from St. Petersburg. Yes, yes, that, that, that is probably true. This is MIT, they recently got their fifth. So they're now up on sixth place. That's a silver medal. That's uh, really, really good. Yeah, it is. Hi, Andre. Hello. Hello. Nice to be here. Welcome. At ICPC Lab. How are you? Oh, well, nervous. I bet. <laughs> I, I'm really, really happy that you are taking your time to come here to be with us on this ICPC Live. It's, to me, important <laughs> that you are here. So thank you very much. You are the coach. Yeah. of the team that won last year, uh, from the university of the team that won last year, and the coach of the team for this year, from yes. St. Petersburg. Uh, yes, I am. 
And you're, are you nervous? Oh, well, that's okay. It's okay? And you've been the coach for this, for this university for many years, right? Yes, I've been a coach since... 2002. 2002. Which is, you know, the first year I competed. Oh, and, I see. And they beat us quite... <laughs> quite badly. Quite badly. <laughs> But no hard feelings. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. So, so, I mean, you're the favorite. How do you deal with that pressure? Uh, the new team, the younger team, doesn't really feel that pressure because why would you? Because it was the other team who was the world champion. It's quite hard to come to world finals for the second time. Well, here they are, Especially we see them now. From when such they are a good. Did you spoke state the University of IT Mechanics and Optics? Here we see them on the screen. Oh, wow. So, what do you think they're doing now? What are they? You can see their screen. As far here. as I see, they're That's working on program, J. working on problem J. Uh, in Java? Yes, they're working on Java. Does that look right to you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> actually, I think they can solve problems better than me now. So. Oh, they can. <laughs> well, I think that the main strategy here is to solve problems in the increasing order of difficulty. Mm -hmm. And I hope they can, could classify them. Although they solved problem D as their third problem. And... Uh, it's not the third easiest here, I think. Is it frustrating not being able to help your team? Uh, I got used to it. <laughs> <laughs> it was, well, uh, it was frustrating for the first years. Although, uh, considering myself, it's hard to sleep well in the last night before the world finals. It is? Yeah, I agree on that. So let's see now, where, where is your team? What's the stand? Still number one? Still number one as far as I can see. Well, uh, but actually it, the most important part of the contest is yet to come. You think so? so yes. So I think the last two hours, especially in the last hour, are the most important. So It will be interesting to follow. Thank you so much for taking your time. Thank to, you for to, inviting me. Oh, please, it, uh, it's our pleasure. And I mean, I mean that it was, it was a little difficult to pull you away <laughs> from following the oh, contest. Sorry for <laughs> Being that. an important coach. Okay, thank so you. So thank you. Here we have the map of uh, the uh, teams from the different parts of the world. Yeah. And there you can see that uh, the majority is in Northern America and in... Europe, and was in, in, yeah, here you have 28 Northern. teams from North and Central America. We also have Alberta over there, last year's host. Uh -huh. South America is coming strongly. 11 teams, uh, Argentina, yeah. Colombia, Brazil. Yeah, and how are they doing on the scoreboard? Oh, what would be the top south? Uh, because you have regional winners oh, we do too. Have, yeah. yeah, we have to point that out. And from Africa, you have five teams, and they're from Egypt and South Africa. So, I mean, if you are the regional winner of Africa, Africa uh, and the Middle East, yeah. that would be the, currently the German University in Cairo. Uh, they're the one with the uh, red, yellow, and black logo. They're in the lead with the three solved problems. Mm -hmm. so they're called the really Africa and the Middle East champions. Current. And we have the South Pacific. Australia, New Zealand with... Here we have University of Melbourne, it's the best team from South Pacific, also with three solved problems. And, and Asia, here we go, a lot look of at Asia, 33. Yeah. Wow. And Asia, this region is actually Asia minus the Russian Federation. <laughs> Tsinghua University is the best Asian team so far. With how many problems solved? Five solved problems. We have Europe, and uh, the best Europe team, of course, is St. Petersburg State University of IT, Mechanics and Optics, because they are currently the best team worldwide. And Andre, the coach, he took time. Well, he can't be with the team, but he... No, I, I but would, I know, would he's see busy that being nervous. When did Saratov go up to second place? Oh, that must have happened recently. Yeah, they got problem E accepted. So you have an ICPC deputy walking around. What is he checking? He's making sure that nothing, you know, nothing that is not allowed is happening. But nothing 
that's not allowed could be happening because you cannot bring any. Well, you could still phones. communicate between the teams. There is, we you cannot stop the teams from bringing their voices. Oh. Yeah, but and that's not allowed. And you know, but. But they sit rather close to each other. Yeah. On the other hand, you don't want to help your. The other teams. <laughs> But they mix them when it comes to different languages, too. Yeah, right? we try to do that. And uh, the former president of KTH, he visited us when we were setting up the studio a couple of days ago. Welcome, Anders. Thank you, thank you. You were the president here at KTH, uh, the Royal Institute of Technology, when you were approached with the question of hosting this competition. Tell me about your reaction then. And uh, then I got the question from him. I think he, he was on his way to Shanghai to the uh, to the World mm -hmm. Championship there, and he said, "Could we make an offer? Since we'd be doing quite well, I believe that we could stand the chance." And then I How asked, "How could you say no?" No, well, when he said the price, <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, earlier, I mean, he had been asking for. Uh, uh, 10,000 euro for, uh, for per year for setting oh, up I the see. teams, and now he suddenly said that he needed the five, 500,000 euros okay. to to be able to make a good competition here. So, and he told me he would manage, and I trust Frederick very much. I said, okay, well, let's try to get it here. So, how do you feel now when you see it on its no, way? I think it's great, you know. Because when we had the first discussion with the head librarian about doing this with the <laughs> library, <everything>? yeah, <laughs> I didn't yeah. And I, I believe if uh, Gunnar is the head librarian and uh, will come here, I think he will be <laughs> proud when he sees so many people in the yeah. library. So it's a fantastic place tonight to be in the city hall uh, and having a bit of a uh, yeah, Nobel Prize laureate. Uh, yes, yeah, I will be there. And uh, what's the score right now? Well, we still have uh, last year's winners in the lead, St. Petersburg State University of IT, Mechanics and Optics. Uh, we have Saratov State University now in second place uh, and St. Petersburg State University in third place. So what you said in the beginning that the Russians were going to be the at the top, that, you know, that's uh, very true so far. Um, then we have University of Waterloo, still not failing even once. <laughs> well, that's true for Sarto as well. No incorrect submission so far. Uh, then we have Oxford University and Stanford, Tsinghua University and Zhejiang University. That's a gold and silver medalist currently. There are really no surprises in the top. These are all very good teams that are supposed to be up there. The University of Waterloo is not a little bit of a surprise? We got St. Peter's State University now taking the lead. Uh, so last year's winner was on second place. Given the fact that we have 105 or is it 110 cameras on the floor, it would be stupid to try to shoot. Mm -hmm. Now we have the home, the home team. KTH team. KTH, yeah. Three solved problems. That's not too bad. Oh, they solved three problems? Yes. Mm. You know, because if you, if you lose your concentration, mm -hmm. then you're definitely not going to win. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to keep it up keep it up through the competition. Mm -hmm. It's also very important that you get a good rhythm, so you always have new problems that you're looking at and you kind of know the solution to. Okay. So you can always start on a new problem all the time, continuously working. Oh, oh we actually have a submission from uh, St. Petersburg State University of IT, Mechanics and Optics. You can see the third row in the judge queue here. Mm -hmm. They have submitted on age. Uh, if they get that one in, they will be on eight solved problems, but we're still waiting for the judge's response. That's what the third yellow dot means. It has been compiled. That's the first green dot. It has been run. That's the second green dot. Uh, and we're awaiting the judge's response. That's the yellow dot. So that is, that is exciting. Uh, they're in the lead, but it was incorrect. OK, that's the red dot. <laughs> well, we talk with their coach, and he's Obviously, really good at what Andrei he's doing. Andrei Stankovic. Exactly. Yeah. I liked it when he said that he wanted to be a coach to improve his students' ability. Yeah. It has just been announced that the scoreboard will not be updated for the teams for the final hour. So basically, the teams will be uh, in the dark for the rest <sighs> of the competition. They will not know uh, how the other teams are doing. And, uh, Do you care about that when you compete? About the other teams? Yeah. 
Yeah, you do. You Aren't can't you just focus on no, solving you, the problems? Well, mostly. But you look a little bit at the others, you know, because you, you want to know if you're winning or if you're in the middle of the pack. Uh, at I'll the very patient. top, we have um, last year's winners. They got eight solved problems before we stopped the scoreboard. All right. And they have submitted. They will win. They mm. might very well win. They have. Uh, how, how could they not win? Oh, well. Well, it is not over yet nope. to start off. That's uh, right. They also have submitted for one more, so they could have nine. And then currently in second place, we have St. Petersburg State University. Um, they, they haven't got a medal, a gold medal in many years. So uh, this is a very good result for them. And then in third place, we have Saratov. That's also a team of uh, first time world finalists. You can see the blue boxes All lining right. up. Chinese University of Hong Kong has 11 submissions for D so far, and nine for K. They are not giving up. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely not giving up. I like that. Uh, University of Melbourne, we should probably look out for. They have submitted once for F and once for H, mm -hmm. and they got many of theirs on the first try. They could very well be solutions. Hi, welcome. Hi yeah. Very yeah. much welcome to the studio. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Harbin is the next host yeah. of this event next year. Yeah. And Lin Chao comes from Harbin. Harbin is very famous for the cold weather yes. because we can provide so many uh, activities related to the uh, ice and snows. And you have in February one of the world's finest ice and snow festival. Yes. And uh, during the uh, World Finals, we will have uh, 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 ice sculptures for every team, for everybody. <gasps> yeah. That would be spectacular. Yeah, uh, I hope uh, all the uh, contestants can participate. I do too. Yeah. That would yeah. be lovely. Okay. I'm sure you will take good care of them. Okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, again, yeah. thank you very much. I wish you all and uh, all the uh, uh, contestants will be there. I'm looking forward to seeing you and them. Thank you very okay. much. Thank Bye. you. Bye. If you look from the top, we have last year's winner, they could be up to nine in best case. St. Yes. Peter's State, they could have eight. Saratov could have eight as well. Oxford could have seven. We have approximately 20 minutes left of the uh, World Championship in Programming. Well, uh, first of all, it's the most problems solved. So th the most green boxes in your line that wins. And in the case that teams have solved the same amount of problems, we look at the time. Mm -hmm. And the time for a problem is just the time from the beginning of the competition until the point where it was solved and you just add up the time for all the different problems that you have solved, and then you add the 20 minutes in penalty for each incorrect submission. So, for example, we look at the Tsinghua University in sixth place, they have seven submissions on E. So if we assume that they got that one right at the end, then that still makes six incorrect submissions, and that will be 120 minutes. We were talking about the Warsaw team, Yes. And I would say yes, usually Warsaw is, is really good. They have won twice in the past six years. You made it to the finals and exactly. you won later on. So these are you know, a little bit more junior than, than the others maybe. Yeah. But I mean, they definitely Look earned, at them. Look earned at them. Look their at them. spot. Here, here we go. Yeah, I got he, it. He found, he found a bag. Exactly. I, yeah, here he found we go. It. We'll see it. Which one are they working on? I have no idea. I think it's uh, E. I think they're working on E for the seventh time, sixth time. Oops, did he get it? Let's oh, see what I they're doing. I can see what they're actually writing. It seems like they are, they're testing their program. They're testing, uh, testing the program to use that program to solve the problem. Exactly, and they're debugging it, I would assume. Uh, okay. I can't really see. Do you always have to do that before you solve the problem? You have to find that? Well, I, I'm, uh, you know, it might be that they had a problem and they have been submitting a few times and they got, didn't get it accepted. So then you have to find the error. Okay. Uh, so th yeah, that's very reasonable to do. So they're debugging it to make sure that what they put in there will be correct. Exactly. As you uh, saw, they had submitted six times on one problem already. Here we can see a graph of the number of submissions during the competition. As you can see, 
God, the judges have been busy. Yeah, and they are getting busier, busier yes. at the end, of course. Uh, and as you can see, the, the number of actually accepted solutions is completely linear through the, all of the competition. Mm -hmm. So after half the time, half the solutions were made. Great, thank you for joining us in the studio. Brenda represents IBM. I do. So, so what's in it for IBM? Is that to like go fishing for the best brains? Oh, absolutely. That's one of our objectives. But it's not the only objective, nor is it really the primary objective. Um, we're very focused on helping to build skills um, in leading edge technologies. And as you know, IBM is a, a leader in technology innovation. And we do this in a number of ways. We have uh, the academic initiative, which focuses on helping uh, develop course material and provide um, you know, equipment and software to the students to teach them um, new concepts and, and technologies. They tend to stick in their groups at the beginning of the week and towards the end of the week. And, and with the colored shirts, it's very obvious because you can see you know, the groups of colors are kind of following each other around. <laughs> and by the end of the week, through the activities that KTH this year and our hosts and ICPC and IBM put together, we try to encourage them to mix and network and, and get to know each other because they will be peers and colleagues in the future. And by the end of the week, they are partying. You know, It's just a sea of different colors and it's just a wonderful opportunity for them and, and for us to provide that for them. Can you believe that the competition is about to end? I can't believe it. <laughs> it's amazing. We just started five minutes ago. They came in the door. Five yeah. minutes, five hours. <laughs> These six hours went really quickly. Well, we have another hour. <laughs> Sorry. We have two minutes left of the, of the competition. Two, two, minutes. Yeah. two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Wow. Two minutes. Can we, yeah, see here is Oxford. They are among the top teams. Yeah, they probably are. Yes, they, sti they still are, right? Yeah, well, the only thing we know is the standing from four hours, and they were that at yeah, first here's the win Here's the winning place. team. That's what you think. Yeah, <laughs> and you agree. It isn't over I till it's over. No. Yeah, but. I agree, but I've been trained for eight years by the ICPC people to never acknowledge the fact that I do believe that they will win. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not. Oh, Cameron. look at that. Look, look at the food view. they left and all the papers. It's completely but, but chaotic. They, they've been here for five hours. Yeah, I don't think throw, it's chaotic. Yeah, they throw stuff when on I the sit floor and the, the mouse book. pads are there. And, you know, that's the way you when should do it. When I sit by my computer for five hours and, and I mean, there are coffee mugs, there are cookies, yeah, scraps. That, that's yeah. the way you should do Chocolate, it. Chocolate, yogurt. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. Absolutely. Look at all those teams with the different color balloons. Yeah. And that was Chicago. One, one minute of the first left, submissions. and then we will have the down uh, countdown in Sh the arena. Should be some panic about that now. So they don't. W what happens in one minute? They can't do nothing. So what, as, as a former contestant, what goes through your mind in the last minute? Well, you really try to solve that final problem. You have that final bug. Can't you please find it? You try to submit something. There's no point in knowing, considering. You know, should we really submit? Well, of course we should. There's you, this you're one pushing the send button. I mean, it's over. Submit it. Retry it. You don't even have to compile it because you don't have the time. Submit it. Submit it. Submit it. And then realize, whoops, I didn't change that thing. I redo it. Submit yes. again. Throw your arms so submit out. Submit your last run. And are you mentally exhausted at that point? Yes, very much so. And now John Clavenger will, will announce the end of the contest. 10, Ten seconds 9, left. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The 2009 ICPC World Finals is over. Nice And now, yeah, what happens is that the judges will, as soon as Everybody's they can... Everybody's standing up stretching. <laughs> every soon, as soon as they can, they will try to get the preliminary results. Officially, you know, if there is a coach that has seen something, you know, some cheating, something's oh. going on, some error, there is a possibility to complain. So, Brenda, are you happy with the competition this year? Oh, it was amazing. Congratulations. Thank you, well Brenda. Job. Well done. Thank you. And congratulations to you. Thank and you. And thank you so much for coming to the studio. Thank it's you for having me. It's pleasure. been great. Thank you very much. Now, did you want to see the highlights? Yeah, could I do that? I think so. Let's thank you. watch. Yes.
your analysts have been trying to analyze, not try, you've been succeeding in analyzing the competition. And, and actually, we had four great hours in, in the start of the competition where we could watch the, the screens of each and every team, see exactly what they were doing, see, see webcam, seeing their facial expressions. That, that was a great time. And we have all, during this contest, uh, been sending small messages to Frederick saying, oh, there, now there's a, a submission from, from team that, this and that. So, <laughs> so w watch it now clo closely. And that, that was a great time. But unfortunately, they cut us away from it one hour ago. I think it's very interesting here to, to watch the Tsinghua University, excuse my pronunciation, <laughs> uh, that actually has six accepted solutions, but have four more submissions. And even though that would be, uh, would be fantastic to have a, a total number of 10 solved problems, uh, th such things have, have happened. I mean, some teams can get three or more, even though it's very rare, but you, you can get three solutions except in the last hour. We're going to start off where we were at four hours, and we're going to play the resolver and see who actually won and who actually got the medals. Carnegie Mellon University will get the fourth bronze medal. Next team is Warsaw, but they are moving upwards. And next we have Altai State Technical University, also moving upwards, which leaves us uh, Tbilisi. They're leaving and they will get the next bronze medal. Big applause for E. Yavakishiri, Tbilisi State University. So, and we have MIT, they got two pendings, one is, and the other is accepted, they're moving up. So now, Tichwingo University on ninth place, they got four pending, and the first one is moving up. This is looking very interesting. And the next one is University of Waterloo. They have nothing left, so they get the bronze medal. They were in the lead for quite a time. Very well done, University of Waterloo. Now in ninth place, Zhejiang University. The first one is a Viek, but the second one is accepted and they are moving up to second place. Next one is Oxford. First one is rejected. Second one is accepted and they are moving up to second place. And we've got Saratov State, two remaining. The first one is accepted and they are moving up to third place, currently gold medalist. St. Peter's State University also moving up and they're currently in second place, gold medalist currently. We're at the University of Warsaw, and they get a bronze medal. Bronze medal for Warsaw. Uh, and we got Altai State Technical University, no submissions left, and they'll get their first silver medal. A big applause for Altai State Technical University getting the first silver medal. We have MIT, but they have used all their pending runs and they also get a silver medal and they are the North American champions. So double applause for MIT. <laughs> Moving forward, we have the Jijingwa University and the first out of the three remaining is an accepted one and up on second place. They're gonna be really dangerous. Zhejiang is nothing left and will stay on the silver medal place. Big congratulations to Seijiang University on silver. The next one is Saratov State University, just outside the gold medals, and they are moving into the gold medals. Currently in second place, and gold medal, new silver medal is Oxford, and they get a silver medal. That was the last silver medal. Remaining now is the gold medals and the world champion. St. Petersburg moves up in second place with their last submissions. And Dijingwa University, not up. But the second one is moving up, and they're actually moving up into first place currently. Without looking at the final submission, they are the world champion. Okay, so we'll finish this at the awards ceremony tonight. Uh, unless you decide that you'd really like to find out what the rest of this is going to be. How about it? Yeah. All right, may, is that make them wait? No. Is that find out now? Yeah. Okay. Thank you.
gold medal, two Saratov State University. Let us see the list again. Now, this is very, well, sorry. Saratov State University got the first gold medal, and the second gold medal goes to St. Petersburg State University. Which leaves us with the final exciting moment. Basically, we have St. Petersburg State University of Idaho, and they got it correct, and they are the world champions once again for the second year in a row. Big congratulations to St. Petersburg State University of IT, Mechanics and Optics. And also great congratulations to Zijingwa University. But the world champions 2009 are preliminary the St. Petersburg State University of IT, Mechanics and Optics. They are also the European champions. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, St. Petersburg State University of IT, Mechanics and Optics. Congratulations for winning. Do you, hey, you can hold this one. That's a microphone there. Congratulations. Just, just, just speak in. No, you just hold it and, and speak yes. in like that. That's are, you my are you tired? Congratulations to begin with. Thank you very much. Are you happy? Uh, we are very happy. Did you feel the pressure because your university was number one last year? The uh, reigning champions. No, we, 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 we were thought to just solve problems so we, and we have just solved eight, nine problems. Oh, how great. Did you follow what the other teams were doing? Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes we were finding for the problems for, for for the next easy problem to solve. Yeah, did you have fun? Was it fun? Yes, yes. Yeah, this is the first year you yes, were in the team. Yes, we are the first year. Uh, so you, maybe you will go to China next year. Maybe yes. you will go to Harbin next year. Probably. Here comes Bill with your with your big trophy too. The trophy. This is just wonderful. Thank you so much and congratulations again. The winners of the ICPC contest here in Stockholm, the team from St. Petersburg University of IT Mechanics and Optics. And a big favorite for next year, I would say, because Absolutely. you would be eligible. Frederick Nimle, it's been a great pleasure doing this with you today. And we thank all of you who have been watching with us today and hope that you will do so again soon again. Bye. Bye, everybody.